In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps for restoring a cow skull and applying a paint technique called the Fordite method. This Hereford bull skull is missing a bone. It does not have horns. It's cracked and stained. It's also sun damaged. So the Fordite method is a great method to hide all those imperfections. You will want to clean the skull as best you can and remove as much debris as possible. Remember, whenever you're grinding on skull, wear a respirator because bone dust is toxic. I used the nasal bone from a different cow to repair this skull. And then once I found a nasal bone that sort of matched um, in terms of the length and shape, I used an epoxy sculpt clay. It's essentially epoxy to fill in all the gaps. When you order the epoxy clay, it says it's going to come in white, but it doesn't. I haven't found one that really is a true white. When you mix the two parts together, it becomes a, a light gray color. What you want to do is if you're replacing bones or filling cracks is to put the epoxy clay in, you know, whatever crack or however you're going to need to repair the bone and you're going to want to then use whatever you can to stabilize that bone. In this case I'm using a rubber band. Oftentimes I'll use electrical tape and I will make sure that the bone dries in the position that I want it to be in its permanent form. So you want to pack the epoxy clay into the crevice that will hold the bone together. Once you get it in the general shape then you can use some water and water it down and it becomes much more um, even. Once the epoxy clay is dry, you'll want to put a coat of a sealer primer on your skull. I always use white. It comes in gray as well, but I always use white. In this case, I wrapped the horn cores with shrink wrap and painter's tape, primarily because I just wasn't sure at this point in the process how I was gonna treat those horn cores. The skull, as you'll recall, didn't have horns, I later kept the skull cores white, which I thought turned out really well. And then it's just applying layers of paint over time. Make sure each layer of paint is absolutely dry before you move on to the next. In this case, I used Rust-Oleum Sail Blue, Gloss Black, and Gloss White. After you have all your layers of paint on, in this case I have about 16 layers of paint, then the sanding process starts. You want to use the wet sanding technique, so have a small cup of water near you. I use 220 grit and 320 grit, and you want to work in small circles. And I'm going to speed up this video so you don't get too bored, but it's a lot of small circles and then you want to make sure you're wiping it off frequently. Also, don't get too much water on your skull, otherwise it drips in all the crevices and it's really hard to remove later.
Once your sanding is done, you're gonna wanna clean the skull really well. I use an air compressor to blow out as much of the sand debris as I can. The key is to not use a lot of water on your sandpaper as, as minimal as you can so that that water and this sanding, the paint sand, doesn't creep into all the nooks and crannies because it's really difficult to get off. So I'll use an air compressor, a toothbrush, some um, Q-tips to try to get that off. Then you want to remove the protective layer on the horn core. In this case, I use shrink wrap and painter's tape. It works really well for keeping the paint off that porous horn core. And it gives you the flexibility to do all kinds of different art treatments to the horn core. Once you get colored paint in that horn core, it's a real bugger to deal with because it's so porous. In this case, I had very little paint squeeze out underneath the protective wrapping and that was fine that it did anyway because I ended up using a faux piece of leather to cover that area between the horn core and the skull. I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's black. It's kind of a stamped leather and it really highlights the black in the Fordite um, painting. All right now that you have the skull painted the way you want you'll want to put on a clear coat to protect the skull. And there's really two types. There's a glossy type and a more matte finish. I use the Krylon Flat Crystal Clear. I just love the look of that. As I mentioned before, I kept the horns white, the horn cores white. I actually applied some acrylic paint to them and put it, made sure it was getting into all the cracks on that horn core. And then I wrapped it with this faux leather piece that I got at Hobby Lobby's, very inexpensive. And I just did three or four wraps around that area between the horn core and the skull. And I love the black look, it highlights the black in the Fordite paint. 